This video covers capture basics with your Medmont E300 corneal topographer. Start by creating a new patient or selecting from an existing patient. Then click on capture corneal topography. Seat your patient comfortably so they can be steady and smooth when you're about to take your photo. Then when you center the instrument, look at the reflection of the placido rings. Remember that the placido based topographer reflects the rings off the cornea, but that reflection is coming off the tear film rather than actually hitting the cornea. So if the tear film is poor, the underlying understanding of eye shape is similar, similarly going to be inaccurate. It's very important that we see quality placido reflection, the rings looking parallel and even as they do right now. Let's center the green crosshair and the red line is telling us we're too far away from the eye when it's at the top of the runway. When it's at the bottom of the runway, we're too close to the eye. We need to move back. We line up green and red over the central ring. The instrument automatically captures. We see we have 97, 97, 97, and 98% confidence. The highest percentage is always to the right. Let's right click, select zoom, and zoom in on these central rings to determine if they appear parallel and even to each other. These rings are looking very good, so we'll click Save, then Clear Images to go back in again. Now we'll center the Placido, again being cognizant that if the Placido reflection shows any distortion or any breakup, any particular lines that are coming together and collapsing on each other in an acute area, that can create distortion, especially in the center. While the Placido looks like it's reflecting parallel and even, we'll move it into the center or ask the patient to blink to smooth out that tear film. Again, zoom in to make sure the rings look parallel and even to each other before clicking save. Otherwise, if you see any tear film breakup, click clear and go back in and take them again. Considering that the topographer is measuring the tear film on the cornea, not actually the cornea, it's important to take multiple images and compare each one that we've taken to each other. That way you're able to say if there's reproducible shape that we're likely looking at the true shape of the eye. Let's also consider the lid and the lashes. Let's ask our patient to open up as wide as possible. Take a blink just prior to capture and we'll ask our patient to blink. Move the instrument into position Try to get an image with the eyelid out of the way. Here we see the eyelash shadows minimized, the upper lid out of the way. However, the lower lid appears to be blocking much of the inferior cornea. Why don't we clear images and this time we'll ask our patient to reach around the chin rest and gently pull down on their cheek so we can open up the fissure a little bit more. Again, we'll ask our patient to blink just prior to centering the unit. And now we're able to see this beautiful Placido capture where the upper lid is out of the way. The eyelash shadows are minimized here. The lower lid moved off the inferior cornea, which allows for as much Placido reflection on the inferior cornea as possible. The key being to always zoom in and determine if the Placido rings look parallel and even to each other. If the reflection is ideal, like you see in this image, then we can expect we'll have an accurate interpretation of eye shape.